This uses the same test strip as the brake fluid video. The difference is that you use the other side of the test strip. It has two different color scales that you use to compare to the coolant in your car. Today is a similar video to my previous one that talked about testing the brake fluid. It is a little bit more difficult to do this test. First, I have to remove the front tub to get access to the coolant tank. First, remove the maintenance panel. Then the HVAC intake duct on the left hand side. As with most Tesla screws, you need to have a 10 millimeter socket either on a wrench, ratchet, or screwdriver. The first two are located inside the grocery hooks at the top of the tub. The next two are located under the mat, if you do have a mat in your frunk. Here you can see them on the left and right hand sides. Let's remove those two now. The next two are located under the latch trim panel in the front. Just pull upwards on the panel and it comes free. Disconnect the wire harness. You can see a little clip holding it in. Here you can see where I'm safely parking all these parts while I'm working on this. Here are the two bolts located under this panel. Now take these out. There's one final bolt up where the brake reservoir is located. Once this one is out, you can remove the frunk tub. Start out by pulling the sides up. They unsnap from their connectors. Now it's free to move out. With the tub out of the way, we have clear access to the coolant area. This is the testing kit pouch and it shows the instructions on the back. The picture of the test strip on the bottom shows the side with two color patches is for the coolant testing. This is what the strip looks like when it's removed from the foil packaging. Remove the coolant cap. Make sure it is clean so that nothing gets into the tank. Dip the coolant end of the test strip into the opening of the reservoir. The instructions say that it should be below 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I had to use needle nose pliers so that the strip would go far enough into the nozzle. Once it makes contact with the fluid, remove it and shake off the excess. Wait 30 seconds. While waiting, quickly put the cover back on to keep any contaminants from getting into the tank. Within five minutes, compare the pad colors to determine where the fluid is on the scale for replacement. Since a Tesla coolant should last many years, this is not a surprise that my color test seems to align with a 60 to 100% effective rate on this scale. It also has around 9 on the pH corrosion acidity level. Here is another view of the results under sunlight. 
The arrow is pointing to the pH corrosion acidity level, which lines up somewhere around 9. If it had been in the 5 to 6.5 area, the coolant would need to be replaced. Now the arrow is pointing at the freeze boil point glycol percent. The test results are somewhere between 60 and 100 percent. If it was 33 percent or below, it would probably be replaced. Now that we're done testing, let's put everything back together again. When putting the tub back in, you can see that the holes are lined up where the bolts need to be inserted. Be warned that Tesla recommends not to open the coolant cap and not to add fluid. Personally, I feel that to do this test will not cause any damage, but please consider this a warning. Also, since Tesla doesn't recommend intervals for servicing the coolant, I feel the owner has the right to make sure everything is okay. On the other hand, I would leave it up to service to actually replace or refill the coolant fluid. As I mentioned before, the coolant in the Tesla should last many years. I'll check every two years to make sure everything is going well. For the price of roughly $1.50 a test, really $0.75 cents if you use both the brake fluid test and the coolant test on the same strip. It is cheap insurance and easy to do. If you are interested, the link for the test strips is in the video description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.